Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. We've got some options. Cards that jump out. Wolfenwald Hydra if we want to do the Field of the Dead strategy. There's Zakama if we want to ramp into something big and powerful. Uh, Yarok could be worth building around, quite a few creatures with good ETB effects. Mindstone, of course, good early ramp in a format with a few expensive cards. Uh, also a big fan of Escape to the Wilds. So there's definitely some goodies. For me it's between probably Mindstone, Hydra and Zakama as a good top end card. Um, Yarok may be a fourth option as well. Probably going to stick with one of the simpler cards to cast, since I don't know how many colors we want to end up in. So I'm kind of liking the Hydra. But it's pretty close with Mindstone. Just because there's not that many early ramp cards in the, the set. But uh, yeah, we'll go with the Hydra. We may or may not end up with a Field of the Dead. And if not, it's just a good 6 mana card that sort of fixes our mana. Alright, second pack. One of the more exciting cards, Mizzix's Mastery. Um, if we can combine it with some expensive ultimatums that we can maybe discard. And then sheet into play. Or just overload it and get a ton of value. What else do we have? Emergence Sequence, 2 mana ramp. And some good dual lands with Temple Garden, especially if we're gonna go green. Think it might be Mastery. Don't always get the chance to take it early and build around it, but this might be that time. So Mastery wants us to just prioritize plenty of instants and sorcery. Something like Magma Opus would be ideal. And uh, maybe if we have a draw discard effect to discard some ultimatums and then cast, that could work too. Alright, what do we have here? Well, I've been on the receiving end of turn 2 Magda, and that usually doesn't feel very good. So I'm willing to take it here. Rootbound Crag would also be a pretty high priority if we're going to go red-green. I guess Shieldred and Eelshnorn, both uh, Praetors, are uh, quite strong as well, if we can get to them. But yeah, Magda just seems like a great early play. So we're probably red. Uh, may or may not be green. This pack doesn't have any amazing red cards, except for maybe Colgan's Command. There is a mask called Exhibition. I don't think there's any actual ways to learn in the format. So it's just a 7 mana card, which is fine, but not incredibly exciting. So I might take the Colligan's command, speculate on black-red. Technically also a discard outlet to enable Mizzix Mastery if we target ourselves with a discard. We may end up black-red, and we may end up splashing the command, I don't know yet. Yeah, not seeing any great combos with Mizzix Mastery so far. There's some good blue cards with uh, clutches. There's a Chainer's Edict in black, which is fine, but not particularly exciting. Could always just take a Dragon. Not seeing any great cards to combo with a Hydra. The Ooze is fine, but also not amazing. Yeah, not sure which direction to go yet. Might just take the Tyrant as a fine 4-drop. And stick to red for now. There is a God Pharaoh's Gift, always powerful. Fire Prophecy has cheap interaction. Or we could try a reanimator strategy with cards like Dracoseth, although God Pharaoh's Gift would still be good there too. I guess if we're gonna go black red, we can just look for more discard outlets, and then that can enable both gifts. Reanimator and Mastery. So I don't mind Gift here. Alright, and so we've got a few discard outlets here between Plarg and Cavalier of Flame. 
both ways to enable gifts and mastery. Uh, Crackle with power is not particularly great with mastery. So it's between Plarg and Cavalier, I think. Plarg is a cheaper discard outlet. Cavalier can be more powerful individually, but I feel like there's no lack of expensive cards in this format. So I'm going to take Plarg just as a way to discard and draw. Can set up our Mastery and our Godfather's Gift. Anyway, I can cast the Temporal Sundering. I do have a few Legendaries already. And Mastery is probably at its best in blue-red. There's no amazing black cards or mono-red cards here. So I'll speculate on a Temporal Sundering over one of the dual lands here. We somehow wield Mindstone. So that's uh, a nice one here. Don't think we're playing green anymore, otherwise Escape to the Wilds would be fine. Samwit can also be pretty strong. And then there's a Callous Blood Mage, which is pretty sweet if we can bring it back with a Godfather's Gift as well. But I'll take a Mind Stone. And speaking of two mana artifacts, there's a Maze Mind Tome as well. Uh, if we're gonna go Godfather's Gift, we do need to make sure we have enough creatures. So that's a vote for Daredevil potentially. Yeah, there's a couple options here. But can't really go wrong with Maze Mind Tome. Yeah, not sure yet which direction this is headed. For now, we're just taking good cards that can go in multiple decks. Kazmina is a discard outlet as well. So maybe we take Kazmina and then that also enables the Temporal Sundering. So we could just be blue red. But kind of an, a weird blue red deck. I guess Mascot Exhibition. Nothing here. Alright, so looking at the deck, looks like just maybe blue red. And we've got a bit of a discard theme to try and leverage Mastery and Godfather's Gift. Well, there's a feel of the dead to combo with my Ulvenwald Hydra, although we haven't been prioritizing lands, so it's going to be difficult to enable Field of the Dead at this point. So instead, I think I take the blue-red pathway over Robber of the Rich, just to have a bit of mana fixing. Treasure map would also be interesting here, but we need some dual lands. And uh, yeah, we'll see where we end up. How are we doing for uh, Joyra here? Well, we do have a lot of legendaries and artifacts. So this looks like a great Weatherlight Captain deck. Can hope to wheel maybe a fight with fire, maybe invocation. But uh, Joyra looks excellent. Can we make the Mirari Conjecture work? It's also a saga for Joyra, so draws us a card. Just need to pick up some instants and sorceries. But uh, doubling a Temporal Sundering would be exciting. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, go for it. Other option would be Thriving Bluff as a dual land. There is a chance we can wheel conjecture, I suppose, but yeah, we'll probably find some ways to make this work. I probably can pass up Sulphur Falls. Baron would also be reasonable as another historic card. That's nice to reanimate with Godfather's Gift, but there's a chance we can wheel it. Sulphur Falls just a bit too good to pass up. Yeah, so we're looking for powerful instants and sorceries. Magma Opus probably still pretty high on our list of cards we want to see. 
to combo with our Mystic's Mastery. And then some cheap removal spells to go with Conjecture, maybe some card draw would be nice. Don't have a ton of Planeswalkers, so Immortal Sun could be good. We have a Kasmina, which we're happy to keep at one loyalty. So, yeah, I think I'm down. Also an extra Historic card for Joyra. Can't really go wrong with Scattering Surveyor. As a Historic spell for Jura, it's a creature we can bring back with Gift and it fixes our mana. Other option would be Banner, but we're not really making use of the one extra power all that much. It does ramp, unlike Surveyor, which just fixes. And we do have a few cards worth ramping into. Although Gift especially requires a bit of setup, so it doesn't necessarily have an immediate effect. Whereas I guess Immortal Sun does. So that's the main card we want to ramp into. But I'm happy with the uh, Surveyor still. Okay, some goodies here. Champion of Wits seems perfect if we're going to do the Godfur's Gift Reanimation plan. Otherwise, there would be Tolrent as another a legendary to enable Temporal Sundering and to go with Joyra, but we just don't have a lot of ways to enable Tolrent. And Spark Double doesn't seem amazing here. Palladium Mirror, definitely an option helps us ramp and it's historic and there's not that many cheap removal spells in the format. Ilharg also consideration although we're not gonna have a ton of powerful creatures to cheat into play with it. And then the Kenrod seems a bit out of place in this deck. So I like the mirror. Scuttle Mutts is more artifact ramp. Fixes too. Seems fine. We did wheel invocation. Don't have a ton of synergy outside of conjecture. Um, Mirage mirror can be powerful. But I guess we'll go with the invocation in the hopes of uh, making conjecture work. So yeah, currently not sure about Mastery or Conjecture, since we're a bit light on instants and sorceries. But the Godfur's Gift Plan looks attainable with Karzak Champion of Wits and Plark to enable it. Didn't think we're splashing a third color. Maybe Obosh is good enough. The mana costs are a bit all over the place, but it is also just a... Uh, a legendary creature, and we wield Baron, that's excellent. Can always cast the pose for blue mana. Don't think we're playing Hall of Oracles in this deck. Alright, so we're blue red, kinda historic reanimator heading into the last pack, and ooh, we've got some goodies. Goldspan Dragon and Bonecrusher Giant. Probably go with the Goldspan. Can ramp us into Gift and Immortal Sun. Just a good card in general. Can play it on turn 4 with a few of our ramp cards. Bonecrusher of course would be excellent too. Although there's not that many cheap creatures we need to stomp. Next up, this is Electrolyze. Always a solid option. Rolls Outburst as well. So we're probably gonna wheel whatever we don't take between the two. Dream Eater also consideration. Although I think I prefer the cheaper interaction also to enable Conjecture and Mystic's Mastery. So, looking at my curve, we have quite a few 4-drops. So I think I'm taking Electrolyze, but I'll be happy to wheel Rawls Outburst as well. 
yeah, we also have Magda to combo with our Goldspan Dragon. That's a good point. Can maybe hope to get a Captain Lannery Storm. Not a huge fan of Cosima. And the Hab is fine. Another discard outlet for Godfather's Gifts. So that could be fine. Also another legendary creature. Don't have a ton of synergy with Tome of the Guild Pact, do we? And then there's a Dismissal as another cheap sorcery that's always reasonable. I think we'll go with Nahab. This pack has Arnie as a fine 3-drop and another a legendary creature. So our Karn's Temporal Sundering is looking great and Jorah's looking very strong too. Magmatic Channel is another discard outlet for Godfur's Gift. Probably not gonna give it plus 3 plus 1 very often. Nadir Kraken could also be powerful, even if it's a bit slow to get going. So that's also a consideration. How many more discard outlets do I really need? Can probably take the Kraken. Can sort of win games by itself. Currently doesn't look like Mizzix's Mastery is going to make the final cut, which is unfortunate. Ended up with more permanence than non-creature spells. A Braid is a good one though. Illyrios would also be another fine legendary creature, but don't really have any combos with it and could use some cheaper interaction. So normally I'm a pretty big fan of Mystic, but it doesn't seem great in this deck. Same with Double Vision. Maybe we play Warlord Rogue. It's a pretty cool creature to reanimate with Gift. As we'll get a 4-4 and two Thopters. So don't have many packs left. Um, not a great Flame Painter deck. Gadrak is legendary but just doesn't do much for us. I guess we do have a decent number of artifacts. I could see enabling Gadrak by just playing like a, a Whirler Rogue making two Thopters. Didn't wheel anything too amazing. Alright, there's outbursts as expected. Still don't think mastery is gonna get there. And the conjecture also doesn't seem good enough. But I think we've got a reasonable deck on our hands. So this is our interaction, some creatures. Lots of legendaries, lots of historic cards. Some invocations and maybe. Masteries and maybe, conjectures and maybe. Depose deploy we can play for just a depose half. So let's see here. Need to make seven cuts, so if we cut three of these, don't need to play the pose, it's just kind of a cantrip. So what do we think of Gadrak? Do have a few artifacts. It's mainly the rogue that's good at enabling Gadrak. Don't have a ton of removal to combo with it, so overall I'm not a huge fan. It's just a good blocker for the most part. Does also make treasure. Yeah, I mean, it's good with Goldspan and Magda to an extent. Do I need Scuttlemutt? 
it's not amazing. Palandio Mirror, definitely a bigger payoff for untapping with it. Yeah, cards I'm looking to cut. Scadrack, Scuttlemut. Yeah, we could add a Bosch to this list, but I feel like it's at least better than these two. Anything that draws a card, also combo with Nandir Kraken, so we have a few of those. Don't think I'm cutting any of the top end cards. Yeah, probably cut both of these. And then one last cut. So I could cut a land. We do have Mindstone that makes mana, Surveyor to find a land. Yeah, sure, we could cut a land. Mana base is pretty evenly split, so 7-7, seven, seven, two dual lands. Seems fine. That's also one of the advantages of only playing two colors, is that we can potentially get away with 16 lands as opposed to four color decks that usually need all their mana. Alright, this looks fine. Feel like Joyra is gonna be the centerpiece of the deck. Fine hand. So no turn 3 play at the moment. Mentor we can kill. Alright, Electrolyze also would have been a great answer. Ooh, juicy. So, could play turn 4 Joyra, although I don't have a play on the following turn to draw a card. So maybe I'm better off going Warlord Rogue into Joyra into Immortal Sun. That's a good one too. Opponent goes for the tokens, which is usually the better play. So now I could play Joyra, could kill the Angel of Invention. Playing Joyra seems fine. We'll just play defense. Don't really want to trade Rogue for Servo token, since Immortal Sun is going to make it so the Rogue is bigger and we can kill the Angel. Alright, Manjura down, unfortunately. So I'll take five. And next turn we can start comboing off. Mindstone's essentially free. Would have been nice with Jora still in play, but oh well. 
I'm not sure what to make of this attack. Could double block the 3-3. Three, three. I guess instant speed removal on Immortal Sun would be bad, but there's not that much they could have. Alright, never mind. There goes my Immortal Sun. Alright, well, this is a bad block now. At least we killed that token for free. Alright, so it's a bit of an uphill battle now. Can Mind Stone outburst the Angel? Or I can outburst, maybe play Plarg, and then Plarg enables Kraken next turn too. I'll take in a bush. So our opponent may have answered both our card draw engines, but we're actually still doing okay here. Alright, maybe that's no longer the case. Yeah, Kaya needs to go. At least the plus doesn't work on tokens. Yeah, if I play a Bosch next turn, they can make a zombie. So they will be able to protect Kaya quite well. I might be better off going wide with Nadir Kraken. Next turn I can pay again. You'll be fine. Trust me. Champion of Wits is interesting. Can grow the Kraken even more, although they can just exile it next turn. Although they're probably just going to chump with a scuttle mutt at that point. But we're also going wide enough that we can pressure Kaya if we Champion of Wits. So let's Champion of Wits. Ooh, perfect. Got first gift. So discard. Probably. Baron. And. Obosh. That goes after Kaya. So now we have Gift on Baron, which is a pretty strong play. Can not bring back Joyra since they exiled her, but got some other goodies like Warlord Rogue, can make one of my creatures unblockable. So if they don't kill the Kraken, I should be able to kill Kaya with an unblockable Kraken. Alright, opponent just makes a trade. That's fine. But now Gift is gonna take over the game. Baron can bounce the spirits. I guess Rogue making two tokens is also strong, but... And then probably fine to hit for four. They can double block, can kill Scuttlemutts. Yeah, that's fine. 
We need to get past our creatures at some point. Still plenty of cards left. This missile can bounce a token. Could also bounce cast out to get temporary access to Mortal Sun to pump up all my tentacles. So that's another play we could make. Although, if they have enough mana to replay cast out uh, at instant speed, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, Lurus gets back Aspirants. And then potentially gives them the option to use cast out on Gift, which may or may not be good for me. Yeah, kind of want to bounce a cast out here. Play these for cheap. And get aggressive. Could also make some creatures unblockable with the rogue, but given that we're attacking with so many creatures, I don't think it makes a big difference. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Opponent might be too far behind on board to get rid of gifts, so they probably have to get rid of Immortal Sun. Which may or may not be enough. But being able to play two more creatures in the same turn, I think was worth it. Cody means they can't replay. Aspirants now. And they're just dead to the Warlord Rogue. We didn't even need Goldspan Dragon. Can make Rogue and Nahab unblockable since we have four artifacts to tap. Fine hands. Um, yeah, we'll go with Arnie. Hornswoggle. Fair enough. That's a pretty good start. Third opponent with five mana. Next turn I can either Tomb Draw. Ooh, Nicol Bolas. With an extra counter on it too. Yeah, that's uh, too bad. Feels like Leyline Tyrant's just gonna be too clunky. Even though it could trade for a 4 4 Nicol Bolas. I think the plan is to just keep the three mana creatures with a bush to somehow try and race. Okay, second so outburst, Kells. What happens if I play Baron bouncing Nicol Bolas? 
Kelsa tanks the replay Nicol Bolas. I guess if they don't have a land, they can't replay Nicol Bolas. I don't know if we want to put all our eggs in the opponent doesn't draw a land basket. A braid. At least a rogue gives us a few chum blockers. And then I probably start scrying so we can eventually gain four. I'll keep a land. So six mana means I can Baron plus Surveyor. Probably discard lands if they replay Bolas. And then the plan. I guess so Bosch still doesn't line up great here since they can block Baron even with the double damage. So the plan might be Rogue and draw card. Huh, interesting. So that also doubles the electrolyzed damage. I think I still prefer Rogue plus uh, Tome. Should probably Tome first then. Ooh, gifts. All right. Now we've got a plan. So hopefully we can chum block here. And then we're just gonna survive, get some of our creatures in the graveyard to combo with gift. Uh-oh. Okay. So that's an unblockable bolas. Although I can electrolyze the two thopters. Yeah, I don't need land 7 necessarily. That's a good one. This can gain life at instant speed, even if I play on the Air Kraken. Okay, now I can jump next turn. I need Baron to stay alive for Karn's Temporal Sundering, even though jumping with Baron to set up a Gift would be nice. All right, so that's going to copy the Rogue to make Balls unblockable, but I can gain four to stay alive. Still going to be a long-term issue. And then I can afford to pay the one since we're going to Sundering here. All right, that's the second time Kraken eats a feed this swarm.
So, got a Sundering, Bouncing Bolas. And then... Can hit for a bunch here. I'm fine if the rogue trades, because then I can gift it back. Yeah, rogue is still probably our option. Don't want to get too, too aggressive. This is probably fine. Could make the rogue itself unblockable by tapping Gift and Surveyor too. But we can maybe set up a lethal attack next turn. Okay. Yeah, can discard Mountain if I want. Alright, sweet. And we managed to turn it around. On the play. Strong but slow hand. Not the best synergy with uh, Temporal Sundering at the moment. But I really just need a third land for Electrolyze, which can then hopefully draw more lands. Not ideal, but I think I'm still keeping. That's a good draw. So I can play a Kraken on three if there's no electrolyzed targets. Heart's a nice one. At least we're hitting our land drops. Is it going to be another feed this swarm? Nope. They can have a land. Alright, do I pay? I think I should don't have enough to kill Karn. I'm very close though. If I don't pay, then I play Rogue. Or I could outburst to hit my land drop for eventually Mortal Sun. Well, I'll pay. Keep up Electrolyze, can always target Karn. Well, well, well. Nicol Bola still probably have a harder time casting, so they can have that one. Although they do have Cold Steel Heart on black, so... All right, Watery Grave lets them cast Nicol Bolas. Although, with Electrolyze, I should be able to manage it. And this Immortal Sun is also looking pretty strong. All right, Illyrios instead. And a Robber. Okay. So... I guess I killed the robber here. And we draw lands. So now I could pay, play Warlord Rogue and Kraken and kills Karn. That feels slightly better to me than using the outburst on the token. Mm, 
now we're going nice and wide so we can pressure Nicol Bolas if that comes out. And we're aligned away from a mortal sun. No way to cast Sundering yet. Alright. So no land for turn. Can grow the Kraken. Bounce the Predator. Smash. And play Tome. Yeah, I don't think Outburst is going to work out necessarily, because they have two creatures to sacrifice. Could use a Tome in combination with Rogue to make Kraken unblockable. I think I'm fine if they chum block. This way I can scry twice towards land six, which feels pretty important. And then all the tokens also play well with Immortal Sun. Rogue down. And they can replay Predator. Nope, E to Extinction. Right, so opponent's controlling the board, but if we can slam down Immortal Sun here, it feels like our opponent's pretty far behind. Almost dead. Yeah, I'll take a gold span, sure. So next turn I can Immortal Sun. And our opponent looks pretty dead on board. They have the triple black, so they can play Dragon God. But it's not going to be enough here. Alright, sweet. Yeah, once again, Warlord Rogue putting in a ton of work. Alright, on the play. And we've got a turn to Magda. Not going to turn that down. And then lots of ways to enable Joyra as well. Bonus got a one up us with a Gilded Goose. Hopefully, Magda can still connect. Turn 3 Joyra would be pretty fun. Alright, that's too bad. So if I play Joyra, we lose Magda. Does feel worth it. All right, opponents off to a nice start with Field of the Dead. Already five different lands in play. Gold span's good. Yeah, this elder also quite threatening. But we can potentially fly over with a gold span to ignore the zombies. Okay. 
probably don't want to give them Prismatic Bridge. Opponent's probably pretty happy to get Forest Incubation Druids, because it also helps for Field of the Dead. Right, they took the Prismatic Bridge, of course I didn't know what was hidden. And a Golos, wow. Opponent's deck is quite something. Goose into Dryad into all this goodness. They already have Field of the Dead, and they have a Prismatic Bridge in hand, so... Opponent's definitely taking the Chromatic Cube to heart. Oh yeah, we're in danger. I mean, hats off to our opponents. <laughs> Not much we could do. Land 6. Don't think it matters at this point, to be honest. And Dryad fixing their mana, of course, to make it all work. Yeah, can't really imagine many better draws. Can play a Sad Baron, bounce a creature. Don't think that's gonna keep me alive here. Prismatic Bridge, another zombie, and replay 5-5 five, five Elder. GG's. Alrighty, well, not a bad first run in the Chromatic Cube. Good to see the power of Warlord Rogue and... Uh, yeah, had a nice time with Godfur's Gift as well, Immortal Sun. But uh, the last deck we face is definitely kind of the pinnacle of Chromatic Cube if you can make it work, although it doesn't seem like a deck that's going to come together very often. But uh, yeah, that's going to wrap things up for today's stream. We'll be back on Tuesday with more probably Chromatic Cube action. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.